All right, kid, let's, uh, we're going to talk a little bit today on uh, lasers and digital signals, and then tomorrow we'll do a little bit on blue sky, and I'd like to have a short quiz on this stuff on Friday. I'm trying to review together tomorrow, I mean on Thursday, as far as what, uh, you know, what I want to have on this short little quiz. Nothing spectacular, but um, just really quick, um, not going to worry so much about refraction, and you guys can see what's going on there. Soap bubbles, pretty much the thinnest thing that human eye can see, and it's kind of hard to explain without you there. Polarization, how it actually stops photons that are not traveling in the same plane. But I'm just really quickly here on lasers, is you get these, you get wavelengths of light that if they don't travel in sync with each other, they're all kinds of, you know, funkiness here. And so you get an LED that's all one color, but they're not in sync. So what we talk about coherent light is they're all in sync with each other. And when they're in sync with each other, it is some seriously bright light that has the ability, kind of like, a, almost like a standing wave. It helps itself carry through long distances. Um, and it can be very, very powerful. So, um... Coherent light um, is the basic idea behind lasers. And with a laser, if you want to look at, um, hopefully you looked up the structure of one inside, but really what they're doing is they're taking, um, they're taking uh, um, different elements, usually helium, neon inside a laser, and uh, they're exciting with electricity. And this is actually what Einstein got his Nobel Prize from, was a photoelectric effect that uh, the one element would get excited and cause the other one to get excited and so on and so on. They give off different photons of energy or of light. And it was this huge cavalcade of light bouncing around inside of a tube and came up with the basic idea of how they could eventually make lasers. And uh, um, tons and tons and tons of use with it. Um, obviously it travels at the speed of light and it can travel with all kinds of information. Um, what I mean by that is that, uh, um, it's where it gets into this application here is that if you take, and because of the total internal, you get this, the idea that light bends when it goes through a medium, it's kind of like a truck going into a mud field out here it actually gets spun one direction. So the light comes out and pew, gets pulled to the right, just like you're you're driving along a nice paving parking lot here, and all of a sudden you hit mud, and uh, it pulls that direction because these wheels in this side are hitting first, and it drags the truck to the right. Same thing kind of happens with, uh, with light. It hits this, ricocheted back in, and because it does that, if this was a tube of plastic or something, it would actually cause this thing to stay ricocheted inside all the way through here, and it's called total internal reflection, otherwise known as fiber optics. And you can get this to travel all the way down for massive distances. And uh, it's what you have here, fiber optic cable. It can carry information in the form of digital signals of uh, electromagnetic, you know, waves of information down reflected inside this tube. And it's the basic idea behind how we get all the information at school, that all of these carry digital information um, by total internal reflection from one place to the next. And that whole idea behind digital information is that at one time, the origins on if you don't know this, that... This is what we got digital information. Eight bits make a byte, and bytes represent words and numbers, and so on and so on. You should all know this, that uh, um, you can get all this information. Let's say this right here um, makes up the, a, a certain word or number or whatever else, that your computers, well, not anymore, they'll take chunks of these, but at one time I was taking a sequence of this, and it was either telling you something, calculating something, um, so much so they're so primitive at one time that people would write code, well, they still do, but they would write code of ones and zeros to tell the computer information and vice versa. And they actually would punch these cards out. That would be sequence of information, IBM punch cards, 
And I knew guys that said that way, way back when they actually punched them by hand. They could feed them in and then a the computer would have stored information. Okay. It would actually do that and tell you this, you know, whatever. Um, and those are all digital bits of information. It got to the point where they started keeping it on electromagnetic, electro, uh, it was taped with like, it actually had little ferrous materials in it that would hold the information of ones and zeros. It's like Apollo 13. We saw them. These things would spin and the tape would go through and it would have digital information spit out. Um, and they would have so many of these would fill up an entire room and do less than your cell phone. Um, and then they finally came up with a microprocessor. And this actually can take all the digital information and store it electrically inside of here in ones and zeros and process that information. And this is the whole basic idea of a computer, a home computer. And uh, that's kind of where we got where the idea is we take all that information and I can send it from one place to the next because of total internal reflection bouncing from one building to the next all across, all over the place. Okay. So anyway, um, that's really all I'm after today is just talking real short, quick here on the idea of fiber optics, digital signals. Um, what else was there here? Yeah. Uh, lasers, you know, you, you did some outside research on that stuff and, um, that's really all it is. If we were in class, we'd do a lot more for demonstrations and that kind of stuff. But I think we're good for the basic idea. Tomorrow, we'll talk about how this right here creates this. And this right here creates that. So that's kind of what we're going to wrap up the unit with. And that will be tomorrow's discussion. All right, kid, let's have fun. Bye.